Rugby AM is brought to you in association with Reactive Insurance for your home and life insurance needs. And I'm Alex Simmons. Welcome to another action-packed show right here at Rugby M, including all of this. So coming up on tonight's show, we've got Challenge Cup winner, Jamie Peacock, with boxing sensation, Josh Warrington. The little giant Luke Robinson is here. Plus, we've got Tony Abbott, Marwan Kukash, and an exclusive, Lauren Walker meets Mandy Kukash. Plus, of course, regular features, Duper League, and don't miss our very special Rugby AM ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. So let's uh, introduce you to our panel tonight. We've got cast legend Wayne Wagger Goodwin. Thank you. We've got a massive contender for the multicolored beard club. Look at this. There's like three, four different shades in there. It's Keith Senior. <laughs> <laughs> Wakefield skipper Danny Kermond. <laughs> and Challenge Cup winner JJ <laughs> <laughs> And I think he's just about sobered up. It's uh, Alex Simmons. <laughs> Where can we start tonight? What a great month it's been uh, for Rugby M. And especially, I've got to start with you. The final piece of the jigsaw complete. Jonesy, congratulations, lad! Yeah. Yeah. Mate, I was so, so happy for you at Wembley. And I believe you bought the cup along for everyone tonight. I have, yeah. To be fair, it wasn't just me, some more. A full club that's been in waiting for a, a good 15 <laughs> or so years. We weren't allowed to bring the real Challenge Cup. I don't think they'd let a, bring, a Bramley lad bring it out of Leeds. They thought uh, Jamie Peacock and Josh Warrington might melt it down and turn it into teeth. So we've got ourselves a bit of a symbol here. Cardboard cut out. But I just think it's a symbol of uh, the cap off of what's been a fantastic decade for Leeds. Ten years this year since we won the first grand final. Uh, as a lead supporter, that was the first in my uh, living memory. And then uh, to cap it off 10 years later with the Challenge Cup final, just galvanising. I know it's been tough, all the fans have always been there with us. And uh, I'll finish off with a little bit of a biblical proverb. You can't re receive righteousness without first going through the refiner's fire. We've all been through it and that's what makes it that bit more special. Hey, James, you lifted it about eight times uh, after the game. Was it heavy? Is it heavy? It was heavy. It was heavy after playing uh, against a team like Castleford. They, they were awesome and they made it very, very tough for us. And Challenge Cups are long, drawn-out battles and you just got to complete the ball and kick down in there in that um, cauldron of a, of a Wembley Stadium. But, mate, it's all worthwhile at the end and uh, the Leeds fans really lifted the roof at the end of the game. I've got to ask you, mate, I've been around your house a few times and you've got all your old losers' medals taped up and uh, now we're going to actually open them. Tell them the story. Yeah, I've got uh, a fair few, four, in fact, losers medals, and every time I lost it, I didn't look inside. I didn't want to open it up and, and reenact the memory. I just wrapped them in uh, sparky tape and put them in the uh, trophy cabinet. But last week, I got one out and I thought, you know what, I'm going to put all this to bed. I'm going to let the air out of it, have a look, see what it's like to lose and remind myself and go out there and hopefully win. And we got it done on the night. Fantastic, mate. And you're not the only one who's had a good week because um, I asked you, Danny, earlier about the beard going for the wedding. And you've told me something really interesting. Yeah, I did. I uh, lost my mental strength and I actually went in for a trim. I went to uh, King Kobe's chop shop in the Corn Exchange in Leeds. Went for it cutting and they said they couldn't cut my beard because it was so epic. <laughs> uh, also gave me a bit of wisdom as well. Give me a bit of wisdom. The wisdom was any man willing to sacrifice his beard for a woman deserves neither. Man. So the beard is staying. Ooh. Great, great wisdom. Fantastic wisdom. Keep it. Have been up to this month, son? Yeah, it's uh, just stroking the beard like Danny there. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'm back on the charity bandwagon. You? Charity bandwagon? Correct. MBE. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got the Great North Run uh, in a week and a half time. Then we've got the Yorkshire Marathon. Uh, and then I've got the Marathon Disable, which is uh, it's across the Sahara Desert over seven days. What? You've got to be self-sufficient. 156 miles, I think it is, across is the Sahara Desert, over seven days, where you've got to be self-sufficient, so I need to take my own food. 
my own sleeping arrangement, so it's going to be a very difficult journey. You need to take your own turban or hat or something to uh, <laughs> that man up as well. I've already bought the, the, the sunblock. I brought it by the, the pallet road. My Maybe that's why you're growing the beard, because it's like... It does help, yes. Are you going to keep it for that? I, I grow the head as well, but I've not got much choice. Yeah. He's going to keep that for the rest of his life, I'm telling you now. I think it looks a bit like Sean Connery. What do you reckon? An older version. An older version. An older version of Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we've had a wicked month this month. Wagga, I think uh, our joint highlight has been, it's got to be me and you doing the on tour down at the uh, Green Man in Wembley. Oh, absolutely unbelievable atmosphere, wasn't it, Simo? I mean, the cast fans, the Leeds fans, not just them two, there were that many different fans there on the day. Absolutely unbelievable at the Green Man and definitely right. going back. Smashed it, Simo. Smashed it, lad. Right now, let's go to uh, Rugby AM on tour, part one, live from Wembley, live from the Green Man pub. Super calls for Roll Star FM is in the place. How's it going, mate? So it's been unbelievable. The sun's shining, the fans are buzzing. We're ready for it. We're ready. It's absolutely ram down here. What's What's talking about the Wembley experience for you, cousin? For me, Simo, I mean, I watch a lot of football, as you know, but the fact that you can walk around, you know, banter on the trains. For the moment since we got into Leeds at half six this morning on the trains, walking Wembley Way, King Cross having a beer, coming up here, everyone's just like one big happy family. And while there's a lot of chanting, a lot of you know, football people just won't be able to believe what we're seeing here because you'd never get this in football, mate, would you? Right, it's going to be a good day today. Who, who, who's the biggest cast fan here? Who's the longest series? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> you got a tattoo? He's got a tattoo, he's got a cast. Let's have a look, let's look at his tattoos. Oh! Tigers on the hats. Are you going to shave your nipples? Yeah, sorry, I'm going to shave first, sorry. <laughs> And uh, you've come down from Leeds today. Who's your favourite Leeds player? Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall. And are Leeds going to win today? Yeah. Is this the first time you've been to Wembley? Yeah. Put that right there. You've been, this is the first time you've been to Wembley? Yeah. And uh, what have you liked about your day so far? Um, I've liked about it that... Um, it's lo it's, I've liked about it that it's loads of Leeds fans here and we've been singing some songs. What songs have you been singing? Um, Can well, you sing one for us? All right. Well, Top man, cheers mate, thank you very much, top man. Tyre, we're just seeing the green man with my dad, Johnny Godwin, how are you dad? Not bad, not bad, son, enjoying the day. Come on the Tigers! Yeah, the green Tigers, man! Tigers, Tigers! <laughs> dad, what's the best thing you think about Wembley? What's the most memorable moment of yours so far in Wembley? Actually, in Wembley, just seeing all fans here, just everybody enjoying themselves, family, kids, and everybody, that's all it's all about. What's the best thing about being a Cass fan, Dad? Because he is a Cass fan, by the no, way. No, I'm a Cass fan, I can remember. Mal Reilly and all that playing. Just Castleford itself, and it's a great town. And I think just that's it, basically. Welcome back uh, to Rugby AM. We're here in the sheds for the first and only time tonight, Jonesy. I certainly are. It's time for a bit of this. The good, the bad and the ugly. Doo -doo -doo. Wow, wow, wow. Loving it, Jonesy. Right, topics tonight, Jonesy. You get a minute each. What are you going to talk about tonight? The favourite thing this month for me was meeting up with people like Bob Beardmore and Alan Harvesty in Rugby M's League's Greatest, and it was a build-up. You've got a minute from now. The best thing this month for me was meeting legends, cast legends, Bob Beardmore and Alan Harvesty when we did Rugby AM's League's Greatest. And it was in the build-up to the Challenge Cup. We sat down, we did a show, spoke a little bit about the legends of the game and what winning the Challenge Cup meant to them back in the 50s, 60s, 70s and some of the people and journeys that, that way they went on. And for me, it just summed up what the Challenge Cup's all about. And as a player that was fortunate to win it a few weeks ago, uh, just yeah. made it that little bit more interesting and that more prestigious for me. And I just don't think we celebrate our old guys enough in the game and have enough of them old fellas coming back and telling us some of the stories and journeys that they went on. So if you want to watch Rugby AM's League Greatest Goal on our website, rugbyam.co.uk, and have a quick check out. Fantastic, Jonesy. Good work, good work. Right, that, that was the good. We're going to move to our one of our partners, Tony Abbott, partner in Rugby M. You're going to talk about the ugly tonight, Tony. <laughs> what, for you, this month has been ugly in Rugby League? Well, it's got to be the witness game and the bad fans. 
So anyway, um, no doubt we've, we've all got them in, in all our clubs, you know, um, and it's the minority that give the sport, uh, and you know, and, and we, we always pick up on that minority. You know, a, a few years ago we had a grand final in the championship. Um, I'm sure that it, it, we, we can overcome that. We can brush it aside um, and concentrate on what you did, Jonesy, a few weeks ago. You know, in the celebration, and it was great here in Marwan. And talk about you know the, the ambitious side of the, of the game and what what the spectacle of what we've got. If we concentrate more on that than the uh, than the bad things, I think we'll do all right. Fantastic, Keefe. Last but not least, what are you going to talk about? Talking about the bad, talking about the international GB Lions. It was rumoured that for 2015 there was going to be a tour to Australia, get the Ashes series back. But the rumours are that the Australians need to rest their players like they did in 2007. So they're calling it off by the sounds of it so there won't be a Great Britain tour. I'm calling the Australians, make sure you do that Great Britain tour 2015. Let's get these Ashes series back on. Let's get the Lions back on, people. Come on, the Lions. Right. Every single, we're going to, we're going to take you back now. We've got a couple of minutes. We're going to talk about uh, our very humble beginnings on radio and All Star FM. Back in October 2012, Keith, we met for the first time and had this mad idea about doing a rugby, rugby league radio show that one day would get on TV. You didn't believe me to start with? I didn't. I met the dark side of Alex Simmons. He, he came to me with this vision, uh, brought me into pirate radio station, which was illegal <laughs> at the time. So I actually did. It corrupted me. But we started off at the bottom, didn't we? And you yeah. know, we had some cold mornings. That's why it's Rugby AM, because we started on a Monday morning, everyone, 7 o'clock. Everyone asks us, oh, why is it Rugby AM? And that's where we started, you know, so it's, the vision has grown uh, and here we are today. Brother Jones, you were next on board. Uh, we did a, a Rugby AM live show down at your club, Stanley. We did, I love the concept of rugby, um, giving a little bit more to rugby league and getting the banter and the personality, showcasing that to everybody who wants to listen and learn a bit about them. Obviously, I come on after the Pirate Radio Station, make sure it was all uh, yeah, legit, mate. And uh, jumped on there on All Star, I think it's been fantastic in your garage, leaving bits of chewing gum all over the place, much to uh, Alex's uh, demise. And then at Stanley, in, uh, I think it was two, end of 2013, we did a live show there, and for me, uh, it was just one of the most gratifying things I've done as a rugby player, getting professional players in, getting the people um, to showcase rugby league in an amateur club, bringing the professional players and stars to those people who watch us and, and essentially pay our wages and see how much it meant to them. And I just think uh, All Star and, and Rugby have been fantastic. All Star FM, we're on every single Monday, 7 till 9 pm. We need you right now, whatever you're doing at home, download our app. It is free from the App Store and the Android phone and the Android Store, so Google Play Store. You can download it for free. We're on every single Monday, 7 till 9 pm. But Rugby AM really took on another meaning altogether, Keith. When we met this man, Tony Abbott, for the World Cup, and uh, my life changed definitely. And without without this guy, none of this would be possible. He sponsors us to come on TV. He's helping us uh, as a business mentor and a partner grow this fantastic business opportunity with Rugby M. Tony, first of all, thank you, mate, for wow. believing in our dream. My oh, pleasure. Thank you, Simo. You know, if you didn't have the building blocks here, there were, there were nothing to look at or invest in. And you know, you certainly laid, laid the um, foundations for it. Easy for someone like myself to get involved. But you know, I guess we all do it for a reason as well. And I've done it for my reasons. You know, I'm a bit like Jonesy. You know, I, I, I fell in love with the amateur game before the professional game. And, and to be involved in what we do now and taking it to the next level and getting getting back. That's why you know, when we get into the VTs of you know, Stanley and the, and the Siddles, you know, it, it, those, those for me are the best bits because we're getting out, you know, to the ground roots and that's what I, I think that we're all about, aren't we? It's fantastic. Um, in the next couple of, like, year or so, we're looking to do more TV, Keith. We've got a few new shows coming up, very excited. And also, Tony, a big opportunity as well, uh, you know, to, to grow Rugby M as a brand. Oh, yeah, you know, recently come back from across in Australia, you know, and, and people over there are talking about what we've built already and, you know, what we've three or four shows into it now. Yeah. You know, we, we've, we've only just started, so can you imagine what we do when we get a bit more planning time and, you know, put this thing together? I think it's going to be fantastic for us. For all our, our Rugby M news, please visit our website, www.rugbym.co.uk. A big thanks to Keithy, Jonesy, and especially Tony for believing in my dream. It's been an amazing journey so far, and we hope we can all come as we keep growing this great game of rugby league. Bonjour, je m'appelle Thierry Albert. Ça va, mon ami? I am returning to the Super League next year. Shh, two feet. The standard of refing has dropped.
It is not sunk and last tackle no more. It is seven tackle. <whistles> to feet, to feet, to feet, to feet, to feet! <whistles> <whistles> Nay, Jordan Cox here. Nay, after losing to Hull in the derby. <laughs> Nay, I'm hoping to move to Salford with my one, so I'm going to race in the other derby. <laughs> Ladder's back again. Josh Waddington, I know you're in the studio. Do you want a fat? You little dwarf from Leeds. Do you want a fat? Derby win, 28 nil, but I want a 29. Never doubt, Radders, I'll give you some of this. When the Red Red Robin got beat by me, ah. Hey, baby, my one here. I love you, Mandy, baby. I love you, Nigel, baby. Only joking. It's all about the money. It's all about the dum 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 dum. Cool cash is funny. Next month on Rugby, I am. My new show, Keeping Up with the Cool Cash, yeah. Rugby AM is brought to you in association with Reactive Insurance for your home and life insurance needs. Welcome back to part two. Um, we've got our first guest of the evening. Now, every time we invite a guest on, we ask them to come in their club ties and someone's already misbehaving. It's Luke Robinson from Huddersfield. <laughs> what is the tie situation? I don't know, I just haven't got one. I think the last time we made a final was uh, 2009. <laughs> That's the last time they showed them out. And obviously we lost and that. The last time I can remember someone having my tie were Scotty Moore dancing away with Mickey Rock. So <laughs> it might be Mickey Rock's house somewhere, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> we'll forgive you then. And I, uh, I also want to ask you quickly while you're here, what do you think of uh, Wagger's impression of you on Duper League? <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. I've got. We've got a lot of stories about Wagger, I could probably come back with as well, you know. The fact that he always used to be naked at the top of my stairs whenever my wife came round, which... <laughs> <laughs> the scary thing was, he's actually more ripped than me, so that was the reason I was more bothered. He does like to strip off as our Wagger, doesn't he? Robbo, thank you for coming for a start. Yeah, no worries. Uh, fantastic to have you. You've been a great supporter of the show from, like, the radio days. Now, um, it's been a difficult year for Rusfield After winning the Upcap last year, has that put more <laughs> pressure on you as a team this year, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think we've probably, you know, teams are, are now expecting us to play a bit better. So obviously, you know, we can't catch anyone by surprise. But it's a strange situation because everyone keeps telling us how we're not playing well, yet we're, I think we're only two points off Leeds and three points off top. So it's, it's a bit of a strange situation we're in, really. You know, we could still finish the season pretty strong in a decent position and go into playoffs with... You know, a lot of confidence. You could get a matching hubcap this year for last year. Yeah, you could do it. Well, we'll just show on it. You know, it don't, who cares where you finish in the league, really? You know, all that matters is how you do the playoffs and, and getting to the grand final and winning. I've heard uh, that you've got an invisible red button on your chin, like Rob Burrow. You, <laughs> you get knocked out quite easy. Is it true that you once forgot that your, your wife had just given birth and you <laughs> forgot that you had children? Yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> My wife gave birth, I think, on the Wednesday. I hope I've got that right now. Um, but we played against the Saints, I think it was Friday. It's on YouTube if you want to watch it. And um, James Graham just sort of caught me, you know, a bit of an innocuous challenge. And I squirreled as I always do. <laughs> <laughs> and carried on playing. I a bit of a pain really for the rest of the game because Buffy said I would just continue asking him, Have I had a kid? <laughs> Have I had a kid? In the middle of the scrum, I kept saying, Have I had a kid? I went, yeah, you've had a kid. I said, I don't feel old enough to have a kid. <laughs> I'm sure. You don't look old enough. Don't look old enough, no. But then when I got through the door, when I got home, actually, it sort of all came round. And whilst we were walking off field, I said, has the game been cancelled? This is, what do you mean? This is, <laughs> why is my walking on? I mean, it's finished. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. And then I got home, and then I just walked through the door, and my wife was there with my first son, so I, I am old enough to have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the, uh, the squirrel. Is there an half squirrel and a full squirrel for our There's an half squirrel. <laughs> I'm probably the king of the half squirrel where it's nice to talk about when your arm sort of comes up and your eyes are gone. Uh, Lee Gilmore's the king of the, the full squirrel. If you ever watch Lee Gilmore once again, at one point he's like this on the floor, his arms up. So I'd say he's the king of it. I've got another question for you. Um, Uddersfield, as you say, have been doing really well, actually, when you look at the league. Uh, Blue won the Coach of the Year last year, and, and rightly so. Who would you tip as your favourite this year for a Coach of the Year, given there's so many clubs up in that top, tight area? Oh, I'd, I'd still go for Darrell Powell. 
and all that, you know, not just because just you were here. <laughs> but obviously, you know, McDermott, you know, he's, he's won the Challenge Cup, so obviously you'd, you'd like to think he's going to be up there as well. But I just think from where he's took Castleford last year to this year, I think it's been amazing. And by all accounts, I've got friends with the Castleford camp, and they say he's a really good bloke and a good coach, so I'd probably say him. And you're one of the few people that stand up to Blue, Blue as well, aren't you? I've heard that. <laughs> Even though you're tiny and he's a giant, <laughs> you don't mind having an argument with yeah, him? Yeah, he's a big man. Yeah, I'll generally, you know, I'll generally say what I think sometimes and sometimes it gets me a bit bothered, sometimes it don't, but I suppose that's what good relationships are about, really. It's about being honest and it's about having you say and, you know, at the end of the day, he's the boss and whatever he says goes, but I like to have my two pens now and again. <laughs> <laughs> International at the end of the year, you've been disintegrating form, so your parents say. You must be, you must be excited, you must, your hat must be in the, in the mix and you must be looking forward to your reacquaintance with Ryan Hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know if my England days were obviously over, but it was an amazing experience to go out there and test yourself against the greatest players in the world. And yeah, me and Ryan Hall have a, <laughs> a strange relationship, should we say. We room the story. Uh, <laughs> <we're> <laughs> <laughs> well, we roomed together in 2010, so he's got his 50 crosswords and Sudokus and all that stuff that he does. And <laughs> anyway, he nipped off and I'm away from the, the, she was soon to be wife, then obviously my wife now, and you're away for a month, so, you know, <laughs> times get a bit lonely. <laughs> so obviously we're getting a little bit in the middle over Skype, not too much, not, not what y'all think it's too much, but, and just as it happened, just as it started getting into a bit of stuff, uh, yeah, he walked in, did uh, right <laughs> <laughs> uh, So I'm laying across half of my own bed, half on his, which made it more, which made it worse, for on his <laughs> uh, I think he just grabbed his uh, Rubik's Cube and shot him out. <laughs> <laughs> but, I think he was more embarrassed than me. Literally did not make eye contact with the rest of the tour. As soon as I went to talk to him, he'd put his eyes, <laughs> he'd look at the floor and talk to him, yeah. I want to know, the, the miracle, goals. you're only four foot tall, how did you lay across two beds? <laughs> <laughs> he would do a bit of tackle technique, he would do his knees, do a bit of tackle technique when I'd walk over, but yeah, I think, uh, I think he found the whole situation a bit more uncomfortable than I did, really. Was it one of them that was just never spoken about again? Yeah, just, we just decided not to talk. Till now, yeah. <laughs> Till now, Till now. someone's brought, brought it up on, yeah, on TV. <laughs> Robbo, you, you know we're always on about players being tight on, on the show, and I'm just wondering if you've managed to sort out that deal yet for the Zavirax. I have never known a man <laughs> have as many cold sores in my life as you. No, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a known fact, really, that within the rugby league circle, I get cold sores, don't I? <laughs> Um, a big night out or a big game, whatever it is, I get run down and get them. But thankfully, we have a, um, we have a secret Santa, and every year somebody takes the mick out of my cold sores and buys me a virus. So I've literally got a tub full at home at the moment. <laughs> it's doing me good. Robbo, thank you very much for coming on and joining us. It'll be fantastic stories. Now, uh, Lauren went off and did her first VT on her own this month, and you met a very special lady. I met a lovely lady, lovely Ma uh, Mandy Kukash. Marwan's better half. We went to their house um, over near St Helens. Very small little place. Um, yeah, and she was absolutely lovely. So yeah, have a look at this. So welcome, Mandy. Thank you for letting us come down today. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, so obviously you're married to Marwan. So tell me, how did you guys meet? Oh, it was a long time ago, about 22 years ago. Um, I was working in a restaurant in Liverpool in the Adelphi Hotel. And he was at John Moore's at the time university and he used to come in and was asking me out and for about 12 months eventually I give in. <laughs> you gave in eventually? Yeah. After 12 months. <laughs> and what do you think about rugby league then? What's... Oh I love it, I love the excitement, I love the how fast it is, um, you know the guys they're not pansies, you know they're not <laughs> lying there faking injuries, exactly. you know they get stuck yeah. into the game and yeah it's exciting. It's an exciting yeah. thing to watch. Yeah. How did Marwan end up buying Salford Reds? Well, I was sitting next to a guy on a plane to Dubai. Um, they got talking about rugby. A few weeks later, we got uh, an invite to a big game um, at Manchester, and it was good. We, ex we it was enjoyed the grand final, wasn't grand it? Grand final, yeah. yeah. Warrington and St Helens. Warrington and St Helens. So you saw all the the action and a big game uh -huh. like that, and you kind of fell in love with it there, did you? Well, we did. I mean, I enjoyed it. It was my first rugby match, you know. Then we got a call a few weeks later to say, was my one interested in buying a rugby team? And I thought, wow, 
<laughs> so we said, yeah, come on, let's go for it. So, yeah. What do you think about yourself, Ed, then? Where do you think it's going to be, be going over the next few years or where do you want it to go over the next few years? I think we're going to get there next year. I think, you know, I know Mawan told everyone we were going to make it this year and it hasn't happened. But, you know, it takes time. It takes time for the players to gel and, you know, I think we're going to be... So tell me, because my husband obviously, Chev Walker, plays for Bradford Bulls, so you was nearly going to be my new boss lady. I was, I was. How did that come about? Oh, we just got talking and the club had such great potential, you know, it was really exciting. I thought I was going to get it, but I don't know. Was you disappointed when that didn't I was happen? very disappointed, yeah, because I had, you know, I had some money set aside, you know, to buy some decent players, you know, and I do think it would have been in the Super League next year, you know, but there you go. And do you think then you'd um, maybe move on to another club if you saw potential there? If there was potential, yeah. But what did you like about Bradford the most? The, the... I just like Bradford. I love the fans. You know, we went there one day and it was great. We were made, I was made to feel really welcome. Um, the players were lovely. The ground, I like the ground. <laughs> you know, it just, and it was, it was great. Yeah, quite sad really that I didn't get it. I was really looking forward to it. Yeah, no, it's been really, really lovely to meet you and um, good luck with everything with Salford. Thank you very much. No problem. Well, uh, we've met the leading lady in his life and here is the man himself, Mr Marwan Kukash. Dr Marwan Kukash, no less. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Thank you. Marwan, thank you so much for coming. It's, uh, it's been great to get to know you and thank you for your hospitality round at your house, your little house in the country. Um, <laughs> we've, we're going to start off our little chat today. We're gonna, we've got loads of questions for you. It's, it's an mm -hmm. honour to have you here with us. But we thought we'd start by playing a little game. Now, right. we, have you heard of the game Mr and Mrs before? Uh, yes. Well, we've asked Mandy 14 questions and we're going to see how well you get on answering the answers that she's already answered. Oh, God. <laughs> let's have a go. Right, let's, let's, let's everybody, let's meet Mandy. Hi, I'm Mandy Kukash. It's great to be here on Rugby AM. Kukash, you get, better get these right. Oh my God. No pressure, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> right, right then, I want question number one. Go on. Have you ever cried at a movie? Definitely, 100% no. <laughs> See what she says. No, I think I've only watched one movie with him and that was Evita and must have been about 19 years ago. And he spent most of the time outside the cinema smoking. smoking. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. my, my one. what is the most embarrassing song on your iPod? I don't have any. She don't was quick any. to answer this one. She was so very quick to answer this one. one. You've definitely got, what, what's the most? Go on. Sulfur reds are rising, no? <laughs> Sulfur reds are rising. So your answer is sulfur reds are rising. Oh, it's got to be Dancing Queen, Abba. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, the bar one. Oh, dear. Oh, God. Right, who is your favourite rugby league player? So you've got one, you've got, give me one point for the first one. Yeah, one point, so one out of two. two, one out of two. Right. Who is your favourite rugby league player? Danny Kermon. <laughs> hey! is, is that your answer? <laughs> Is that your answer? Can I change my mind? Yeah, you can change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> right. Must be Sonny Bill Williams. Sonny Bill Williams. So, my one is saying Sonny Bill Williams. Mandy what said. Say? Oh, that's a hard one because he seems, uh, you know, he likes them all. Um, maybe I would say he's got a bit of a soft spot for Rangi. Oh, Rangi Chase. Oh. <laughs> Rangi will not be happy. Yeah. <laughs> Transfer request on the Monday morning. Uh, um, on a scale of one to ten, Marwan, how funny are you? Well, I think I am, but you won't think so. <laughs> so, so, I, so one is the lowest, ten is the highest. And I have to go with her answer. What answer yeah. would she give? Yeah. Probably two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Marwan says two, Mandy says... One. <laughs> 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 and she was that quick. Well, I get she was that like. quick, like, one. <laughs> one. <laughs> right, um, what is your most embarrassing ever moment? Probably when we started going out together, uh, she took me swimming and I nearly drowned. <laughs> <laughs> you can't swim? 
No, I can't swim, no. <laughs> and I had to pretend that I could. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just want to see you in a swimming closet? Is that what it uh, was? Most probably, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Player. Right, um, my mum says he couldn't swim. Oh, it's got to be when he nearly killed me. Um, we went to Penang on our first date and um, I didn't know That's we could it. swim. That's it? Um, we yeah. went down a slide and he landed on top of me and it was in about four foot of That's water and he just <laughs> flattened me. I was on the boss and trying to get up and he couldn't. Oh, God, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give no, you a we'll we'll point for that. You're doing all right, you're doing all right. That's what's that, Jonesy? You're keeping score. That's three out of six so far. That's no, not, mate, not three out of four, <laughs> come on. Three out of six. That's, that's, that's not, that's not a three out of five. Three out of five, okay. it's not a bad. Two out of five? Three, three out of five. Three, three, three out of five. five. Jones is keeping score, he's an honest man. Right, um, what is Mandy's favourite perfume? Ooh, oh every man should know. You know what, I've got, um, I've got this written on a piece of paper in my wallet, <laughs> right? So every time I pass by Duty Free, <laughs> I'll pick up. It's, oh, um, it? <laughs> it's that YSL, what is it? YSL. You can't ask me. Saint Laurent. I know what she said. Yves Saint, Saint Laurent. Saint yeah, Laurent. I know it's YSL. YSL. Like that. But don't ask me the number unless you want me to get my wallet out. I need like to that. get your wallet out. <laughs> but my favorite, <laughs> but this is, uh, my favorite perfume on her yeah. is her smell in the morning. Oh. She smells lovely. Better be right answer. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying YSL? Chanel number five. Mandy says? Um, you probably won't get this, but it's Chanel number five. Oh, I have to buy it. God, Mandy. <laughs> and she added there, and she has to buy it herself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll right. blame that on Layla. <laughs> okay, um, no, question number seven. You're doing all right, John? How many questions there are? This is 14, mate. Oh, my Plenty God. of questions. <laughs> okay, go on. Three from six of them. Halfway, half, halfway. Uh, what is your worst habit? Um. <laughs> 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 I know what she likes, sir. <laughs> you see, in the morning, I love making myself a coffee and heading to my favorite toilet where all my trophies are, <laughs> right? And having a cigarette and do what I need to do, <laughs> right? And she hits the roof for, you know, leaving the toilet dirty. No, I, I, I flushed the toilet. <laughs> no, I meant using the ash. Oh, <laughs> flicking ash? Flicking ash flicking on the ash. toilet, yeah. So, while you're well, you having your coffee, on the toilet, looking at your trophies, flicking ash in the BD. His worst habit is smoking in the bathroom and flicking ash in the BD. Hey! <laughs> what is the most romantic thing you've ever done for Mandy? I wanted to propose to her, yeah. so I've hired a private jet, took her to Manchester. The moment she saw the Learjet, she said, there's no way I'm gonna get in that, <laughs> right? So um, I had to uh, <laughs> cancel the plans <laughs> or cancel the flight. Then I think, and it was very romantic, we went to California and uh, I hired the beautiful li limousine with a hostess, etc., in order to propose for her. Five minutes riding the limousine, she got sick on me. <laughs> right, but, uh, that's, you know, it was a very romantic evening. That's the day I proposed to her. So, my one saying the proposal, uh, California, romantic, the car, Mandy says. Um, proposed to me, uh, took me to California. I think we've been together about three Can years. I've been and yes, I promise you. He hired a beautiful car and, yeah, proposed to me. But I got oh. travel sickness, so it didn't end up that good. <laughs> she was sick on me. We had to. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Um, Jonesy, how's it getting on? He's got five from eight. That's good. That's good work. Yeah, that. Very well. Very well. What, but right now, it's, it's every man's nightmare. What is the worst present you've ever bought Mandy? Mandy loves her cars. And uh, came in really happy one day that I've ordered uh, a Range Rover for her. A special color pink. And she made me take it back and uh, she did to swap it. Uh, for another colour, so I'd say that's the word, probably a the pink word. Pink Range Rover. Yeah, that special colour. Special colour. <laughs> yeah. Bright pink. Well, it was pink. <laughs> <laughs> but she made, she made me take it back and swap it to, I think, a black one at the time. Black one. So you're saying a pink ro uh, Range Rover? Mandy says. A pair of white canvas trousers for my 40th birthday. That was a size too small. 
Ooh. Ooh. A size too small. That's a fist biter. <laughs> right there. Not bad, not bad. Jonesy, how's he getting on? Five from nine. Five from nine. Number ten. I think every woman's got an answer for this one. Who would Mandy say is the sexiest man in rugby league? She likes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it's hard to choose. I'll go for Gareth Hawk. Just to embarrass her. <laughs> I'll say Gareth Hawk. Gareth Hawk. Right, uh, Ma um, Marwan says Gareth Hawk. Mandy says? Uh, I think they're all <laughs> lovely, but I've got to say Lamatassi is my favourite. Lamatassi. Lamatassi. Mm. You know. Gareth is not going to be happy. Transfer <laughs> for Lama Tassi in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got an, a man crush? A big you bar, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Every man's got a bit of a man crush. Um, Kermo was your man crush? Beckham. Beckham. Wagga was your man crush? Uh, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer? <laughs> <laughs> What sort of show is this? I'm, I'm, <laughs> mate, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go Sonny Bill as a glamour. Right. Sonny Bill as a glamour. I'll go for Jamie. You go for <laughs> Jamie Jones. <laughs> hey! Marwan says Jamie Jones Buchanan. Mandy says... Marwan? Uh, Nigel Wood, it's got to be. Oh, oh my God! Oh. <laughs> uh, what pet name does Mandy have for you? I'm going to give you a little tip. Shall I give him a little tip? Give yeah, a little give him a little tip. Think about before you had your children. What, what did she, she used to call, call you? you? As a little <laughs> cute name. Cute. It's, uh, oh, it's so cute. It Go on, cute. tell me. You know the answer. I've no idea. <laughs> write it <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> write it down. <laughs> no. Get this wrong. You're in trouble when you get home, son. <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. My one says sweetie. Mandy, what do you say? I used to have, I used to call him Mary Shandon. Yeah, oh, I don't yeah. call him it. Anymore. Sorry, darling, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, that was. <laughs> what does it mean? Uh, because we used to always drink Mary, and I used to call him Mary for short, from R1. And we used to always drink Mary Shandon. So it's always Mary Shandon. But then you have kids, and that all goes out the window. <laughs> oh. You are in trouble for the girl. <laughs> Last question to salvage a bit of pride. Go on. How long have you been together and what date is your anniversary? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's just, one second, let's just, let's just see who knows this. Wagga, how long have you been together with Kimu and what date is your anniversary? I got married October the 11th. What's your anniversary? Well, it'll be October 11th this year. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a year, no, man. When you met her, when you met her. Oh, from when I met her? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> Special way then. No, no, no. I were in, uh, I were in a pub in Wigan, <laughs> pub in dancing Wigan. on a table naked. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that not surprise you? My one. Our first date together was on 25th of July, 1992. Oh, sure. So that's 22 years ago. Yeah. And the reason this, why, man? the reason why I remember it, because our first date together was in Malaysia. I've known her for a year before she agreed to go with me. And we got married on the 13th of June, 1998. So that's 16 years. Let's see what Mandy says. She can't We've get been together time. about 22 years. What's your anniversary? 13th of June. Hey! Oh, you salvaged it back now. salvaged it back. He salvaged it back. Salvaged back. I, think, I think you're in the good books now, Marlon. I hope so. All right, I we've got so. a few questions for you. Thank you for coming on today. Jones, you want to kick us off? Yeah, a little bit of fun there, Marlon. I've interviewed you, I've met you before, and uh, I'm uh -huh. really intrigued about your background now. It's a little bit serious, but the Middle East at the moment is probably as bad as it's been in my lifetime. But you grew up then in a war zone. I just wanted to ask you, you know, what do you remember back then, and how did that forge the character that you've become today? Well, I, I mean, it's a very... Uh, well-known story by now for many people. Uh, I grew in Palestine, grew up in Palestine where I became uh, a refugee in 1967. Suddenly, you know, you are asked to leave your own home, your, your own village, and you run away, literally you run away for safety. And uh, I remember even we didn't, I didn't have a shoes on and we 
walked. For those who know the geography of the West Bank and Jordan, there's the river in between. And you li we literally walked for about three days to get to the other side of the river. And, you know, you live, we lived in a refugee camp for about three years, got involved in literally fighting. When you say fighting, you know, in a civil war or being involved in a civil war for survival. And that's taught me a lot of things in life. You know, most important thing it taught me is never to give up. If you have a dream, like I had a dream to be able to cross the river and survive, despite all the difficulties we had in between, you know, we were all determined just to make it. And once we got to the other side of the river and we lived in a, in a refugee camp, you know, I remember speaking to one of my teachers at the time within the camp and she said to me, well, what do you want to be, right? Or what would you like next? You know, you hear kids saying, I want some biscuit, I want some food, etc." And what I said, I wanted to, to go to school, then I want to go to university, I want to become somebody who is qualified and earn a lot of money. So I've always had a vision of what I want to, to do and maybe my life, early life, taught me is never to give up yep. on what you want to do, right? There are hurdles in everything you do. Make sure you go around them and never give up and never go backwards. So that's the hardest. That's the most important thing I've learned in life. You've got a great character there. That's, that's as all a character building as you can find. What do you want to do in rugby league? Well, in the rugby league is uh, a sport uh, that uh, I become to so involved with to the point where I'm almost addicted to it. I really love the sport. Uh, I love watching, watching it, love getting involved with the boys. Obviously from a club point of view, uh, I came in uh, early last season and I made maybe some silly mis mistakes and stupid uh, statement by saying, I'm gonna turn this club around within a very sh short space of time and uh, to turn it into champions. Well, we know that can't happen. In a way, we failed to do that this year, but we have progressed yeah. from where we were last year. But I'm more determined now to keep that progression, right? And to challenge you big boys, <laughs> right? Because at the end of the day, look, we need to be beating clubs like, or to be competing with the clubs like yours and you know, likes of Wiggins and Tallinn and Huddersfield and so on. And that's when you know you, know, you have achieved uh, your aims for the club. But as for the sport is concerned, I genuinely believe that we could make the sport a lot bigger than what it is now. My worry about the sport is people who, many of the people who are involved in the sport truly believe that we should accept it as a minority sport. Where with me, I think it's a lot, maybe because I haven't been influenced by the running, you know, yeah. being in the sport for so long. But in my opinion, rugby league could be a lot bigger than what it is now. What would I do? There seemed to be a lack of confidence or, you know, maybe in, in, the, in the way or the leadership of the game. One of your guests who's coming on the show later on, Jamie B. Cook, is one of those that the sport cannot afford to lose. Once somebody like Jamie stops playing, we need to make sure the likes of him, Adrian Morley, John Wilkins, Kevin Sinfield are involved in running the game because they are the type of people the ordinary fan will connect with and <coughs> trust. So if you have a neutral seeing the likes of Jamie or Kevin on television promoting the game, they'll believe them, they'll trust in them. I have nothing personal against Nigel or Brian but it's more likely people will connect with the likes of Jamie B. Cook, having achieved so much in the sport, than people like Nigel Wood, for example. The other thing that I would love to do is to be able to add different attractions in the game or different versions, over different versions. And we talked a lot about maybe the Magic Weekend consisting of the Nines, Nines competition. competition. The Nines competition, because I think the Nines competition could do for rugby league what the limited over game in cricket done for the, the game. I mean, look at cricket where it is now. It's in a healthy position. Look at it where it was 30 years ago. It's where rugby league is now. So I think the shorter version of rugby league, i.e. the nines, 
could do the same. Bring some new funds to the Magic yeah, Weekend. Uh, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, to grow any, any sport, you need to have new fans. And that's what will bring the fans in. No, I was going to say, you've done something else in the game which no one has ever done before. You've brought on fans as directors, is that right? Yeah, that's true. Look, in every business I've done, and I've been involved in many businesses, I've always mm -hmm. consulted the customer. The customer will tell you more about the way the game should run and what you should be doing than anybody else. And that's what I've always done, right? In rugby league, it's no difference, right? I think the people that we should be listening to, and a lot of people maybe ridicule me for going on Twitter and discussing things with fans, but they teach me a lot. I learn quite a lot from them. And the 12 fans, they're gonna be Salford fans, they're gonna be my board of directors or my board of advisors, they're going to advise me on almost every aspect of running the club uh, in, in terms of, you know, when we should bring uh, on, on a range of, of, of topics. And it's not a gimmick. It's, they are going to be the sample of my customers and we need to listen to them. And maybe this is what leadership or uh, the RFL should be doing. Listen to the fans. Uh, and the fans will tell you an awful lot of what they want. Are they allowed to sack you if they want to? <laughs> they are, look, this is serious. And um, you see, for me, I mean, what's the long-term objective of the club? The long-term objective for me is really to build a club that can compete, win trophies, but financially sustainable. Once that's achieved, the club, I will be more than happy to move it over, to give it back to the fans. Right. At the end of the day, as an owner, we are only custodians, yep. right? We need to take the game, well, sorry, we need to take each club and advance it so far. Once I believe the club can stand on its own feet, then the people who should be running it are the fans. And it's up to the fans to keep me or to replace me. Fantastic, mate. Honestly, it's amazing what you're doing for the game. I think we'll one more time for one more question. Oh, I've got to ask you this question, Marwan. Where was my five year deal? I was there, I was there, I what? wanted 32, yeah. Marwan. You put you know on scrap Come it, back, Marwan. mate. Come back. <laughs> Come back. Uh, well, that's, in all seriousness, clubs need people like Wagger around. Would you mate, give a job see, promoting the club when he finishes playing? Uh, mate, I've, you know, when, when the first year when I was there, uh, I've listened to people. They said, get rid of Wagger. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, no worry, not only we got rid of Wagger, but we got rid of a few others yeah. that we should have kept because they bled with pride at the time, yeah. you know, with the right attitude, etc. And would love to see people like Wagger back. The, the fans speak very, very highly of him to come and do some work for us. This is Maybe. Now. Sorry? This is a celebrity now. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it costs us some money now, man. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I'll make him more of a celebrity if he comes to work with me. Yeah. <laughs> double yeah. deal, Simo, double deal. Double deal. Double, <laughs> double deal. You still fancy a bit of Kermo? <laughs> well, he never replies to my messages. <laughs> <laughs> Marwan, thank you, thank you so much for all your hospitality. We've got an extended interview with Marwan and your, your beautiful daughter Layla, who is also a massive rugby fan. She is indeed. The whole family now, uh, uh, rugby league in a way, it corrupted them. They used to love racing, going racing, and we've never missed a meeting in um, Chester or Haydock. Now, that when they're planning their schedule, they're seeing when is the next game before they decide which races to go to. Well, next month we've got a very special uh, little meeting where you've invited us along to Haydock and we're going to bring some of the rugby league boys and yeah. we're going to see who can win the most money. Obviously not betting on rugby, but having a few bets on the horse racing. But you know we that in, during that day, who are we going to have running? Who are we gonna we're going to have Steve Prescott running. Aww. Steve Prescott, fantastic. Yeah. And I think if I, if I don't get my days, uh, dates mixed, I think it's Saturday the 6th or the 7th of September, but it's that first Saturday in September. If you'd like to see the extended interview with Marwan, please check out our website, www.rugbym.co.uk. We'll be back after this break. Thank you very much, Marwan. <laughs> Rugby AM is brought to you in association with Reactive Insurance for your home and life insurance needs.
<laughs> Welcome back, part three rugby. An awesome show tonight, Laws. Who have we got now? It is, eh? We've got two for the price of one now. We've got uh, both uh, displaying their trophies. We've got Josh, the Leeds Warrior Warrington. And we've... <laughs> we've got Jamie Peacock. <laughs> Jamie's got his trophy and Josh has brought his belts. Tell us about these belts, Josh. Uh, we've got the Lord Lonsdale, also known as British title. Hold it up. Let's it's, have a look. Uh, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. It's the oldest, oldest belt in boxing. Um, dates back to like 1906. Um, it's like a bit of a prestigious prize for British boxers and uh, we won that in the last fight. And uh, over here, we've got the Commonwealth featherweight title as well, which is won, won back in November last year. That's so. impressive, that's impressive. So, you look a bit of a, an odd combo sat there together. Tell me how you two know each other. Uh, we used to date. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen how Frank Maloney used to be um, a <laughs> man? <laughs> yeah. I've got another way around. Um, <laughs> no, um, Jamie were giving a, um, a motivational speech up in, up, up in a pub in Bramley. And uh, <laughs> 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 he was telling a few stories and, and whatnot, and he got invited up. And uh, I just said when he was walking out, here, listen, uh, keep an eye out for us, you know what I mean? And uh, and he has done, and we've got a bit of a mutual friend. Um, is it Screech? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's called Spence. It looks like Screech yeah, off uh, Saved by, yeah. Save yeah. by the Bell. Yeah, yeah. And he, he just. You just have to um, for your fight the year if I walk in with your belt and yeah. go in the dressing room beforehand. I was like, definitely, it was a massive honour. Yeah. One town leads and that. And that's it. Yeah. And you've got to be walking in the ring with him next time. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you fight when you're fighting now. I'm fighting uh, next fight's um, fourth of October, Saturday, fourth of October, um, down at the Leeds Arena, Leeds First Direct Arena, and uh, it's for the European title. How, how does it feel fighting at the Leeds Arena with all the local boys supporting you? Yeah. It's somewhat special. I mean, we've gone from working men's clubs to, um, to you know, to sports halls um, and to arenas, especially in my home city. I mean, I've drove past that uh, arena about 100 times. I watched it being built. And when I've always said, oh, one day I'd love a fight, you know, and then, you know, I mean, getting to do it and fight for the British title is, was somewhat special. So it's, it's amazing. And walking out in front of, like, I mean, last time on a Wednesday night, there were, like, three, three weeks' notice, but, they were, like, 3,000 Leeds nutters going mental to our <laughs> I predict a riot and uh, yeah, it, it's, you can't beat it, it's like what dreams are made of and for European title as well, it'll be, it'll be something else. You so. know when you're in a dressing room before a big game, you, you've always been there, that you, you can sometimes cut the atmosphere with a knife done, it gets really close and intense with about 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago and it was the same just before I was going out to the fight, it was pretty relaxed but then it got really electric in the dressing room and it's it really good to be part of that and feel that different feeling within, a, within another, another sport. Did you actually feel like getting involved? See, you know, like you say, with the intensity, <laughs> did you start thinking that you no, were no, getting ready for the fight? Limits, I know my limits, I just said to him, uh, if you see three of them, hit the one in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, uh, Jamie Peacock's had a few rumbles in his day, Willie Mason, Josh Perry. Have you ever seen any of his fights and what do you think of his slugging technique? Yeah, I've seen him, I've seen him going a few times and I've been watching it on, on telly and I've got off at the sofa and went, go on Jamie, give it me, give it me something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got a cracking right hand and uh, I'll, we're going to talk after about getting him in next prize fighter. 50-50 yeah. yeah. split. Fancy it, fancy yeah. it. Prize I think fighter. Keith, that's more Keith's game than me at the moment. Know, Talking about jobs outside the sport, we've just heard Marlon Kukash there saying, Rugby believe needs to keep people like you in the game, Jamie. And you're a very opinionated character. You disagree with everything that anybody says. And <laughs> you, when we say we'll agree to disagree, you won't even agree to do that. Uh, <laughs> is staying in the game something that you want to do when you finish playing? I agree with you, yeah. I'd like <laughs> to do that. <laughs> yeah, I've, not, I've got opinions on stuff, but I'd love to stay in the game. And I think Marlon got it right at the end. We're all just looking after the game. It's not, it's not our own. It's not anybody's game in particular. It's just our duty when we're involved in it to make sure it's the best thing ever and when we hand it down to the next generation that the game's in better shape and, and I'd love to be involved in that process at the end. I think that's the reason why I've gone back to, uh, well, I'm not going back to, I've gone to university now and uh, trying to uh, get a master's in sports business and administration. Uh, it's pretty handy. Kev's in there too, Kevin Sinfield, so I just sit behind him, I'm copying cheap. him, yeah, <laughs> to be honest. So I'm not sure whether I can do that when I finish playing, but yeah, I'd definitely, I'd definitely love to be involved with the RFL. What's your ideal job then? My ideal job would be, you put me on the spot now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be involved running the game somewhere. So you'd write Nigel Wood's job? 
Yeah, that'd be nice somewhere <laughs> down the line. <laughs> Did you watch everyone say that you do it for half price? That's who you said that, Keith, not me. <laughs> I'll do it for a third if anybody's interested. <laughs> <laughs> You're the most decorated player to ever play the game. How does that feel to know that you've won more than any other player ever? Uh, you know what, you don't, you don't think about that at all. I think because it's such a team sport, I just, when I look back sometimes, I think I've been really blessed to play in two really good teams, two, two kind of dynasties really, the, the Bradford dynasty early on and then the Leeds one we're in at the moment. And as the game proved when we won at Wembley, every player had to play well for us to win. It wasn't going to be one player that stand out and would win the game. And that's why I feel so lucky to be involved in so many different characters and, and um, managed to stay within these teams and, and just keep winning. And I think, yeah, really enjoyed it. How do you feel about the end of the season? No Leeds team has ever done the double. Could this be the year? This is as good a chance as we've got. Um, obviously, we've won the cup and, uh, and I think that can give you a boost. OK, you know, you can party afterwards and <laughs> that can take a bit out of you. But, um, <laughs> but uh, it gives you a boost because it gives you a massive confidence because you've nailed a big game. You, know, you don't fluke a Challenge Cup final. You can, you can maybe fluke getting to the Challenge Cup by playing weaker teams, right? But when, once you get there, you've got to nail a performance and we did that and that kind of gives you a blueprint to go on for the rest of the year. So we fancy our chances, but as, we, as everybody else knows, there's some great teams out there. You probably retired from international rugby maybe a year too soon. Do you think that's long that's added to your longevity at club rugby? Well, well without a doubt, I, I was just doing like you know what it's like four weeks training and, and back into the and back into playing, and you just can't do that when you, when you get to 32, 33. So now I've got 12, 14 weeks to get in the best shape possible, get really fit as strong as I possibly can get, and, and just rip into the season. Then it gives you a really strong basis. Then you, you can just cruise through the season. So. Without a doubt, I, I would not be able to play to this level without um, quitting international rugby, which is a shame, really, because it's something I love doing. Last question. Um, 2015, there's nothing in the international character. It was rumoured that the Lions would be coming back. Would you like to see Lions returning? What could it add to the sport? I think rugby league struggles sometimes with brands, me. I think, you know, we've got... We haven't got too many great brands out there at the moment, uh, successful brands. Uh, the England Rugby League hasn't been successful yet. I'm sure they will be in the future. But I think that Great Britain brand should be out there, should be brought back. Because people love history. People love history and tradition. It's been proven. And Great Britain's got that. There's been some giants won that year and there's been some great victories in that year. So they should bring it back. It's a, it would be very disappointing in, in 2015 that they don't have a Great Britain Lions tour. Thank you so much, you two guys, for coming on tonight. Josh Warrington, Jim Peacock, make some noise. <laughs> keep watching, keep watching Rugby M uh, as we go into part four with more fantastic guests. Rugby AM is brought to you in association with Reactive Insurance for your home and life insurance needs. Welcome back to part four. We're really spoiling them tonight. Who have we got next? Oh, mate, it's been such a show. Look, Robinson, Marlon Kukash, Tony Abbott, JP, Josh Warren, and now the marrow himself, the big man, Kyle Amor! <laughs> Officially, officially the strongest man in Super League. I think everyone has seen how strong you look tonight. <laughs> JP was intimidated. You know, we're all intimidated by your strength, Kyle. How are you, mate? You all right? I'm, I'm fine, thanks, Simo. Yeah, really well. Have you, are you looking, you're looking good tonight, looking dapper? Yep. <sighs> looking well, smart, aren't I? I've got to ask you, I want to kick off. Saints this year, it's, uh, you look a great side, especially through the middle. Very strong, but the obvious question that everybody's asking, can you still keep the momentum and can you win Super League? Without any halfbacks, uh, I, I think we can. You know, we've um, we, we've had to we've had to look at things and, and readdress things in order to in order to go forward. You know, the the, the players that we're missing, um, it's no big secret. They are key players, like so. We've just got to uh, we've just got to stick to our strengths and stick to Brownie's game plan, and uh, hopefully that'll be enough to to see us through and carry some momentum. How are you finding uh, Brownie? First yeah. year under him, what's he like? As a yeah, player? really good, really smart coach. You know, he's helped me out. He's helped me out a lot, like so. Um, now I'm, I'm really happy to be working with him, yeah. Nice to see you, Kyle Jamal! <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you, brother. Uh, question for you. You're going through a tough, you'll be going through a tough period at the club at the minute. Who's your real leaders amongst the squad who's going to bring you home? 
Uh, well, first and foremost, you, you know, you look, you look at our skipper, Paul Wallens, you know, he's been there and, and done it for, for so long now. He still, you, you know, he, he still knows what makes us all tick. So he's, he's very vocal in around training and, uh, and gets his, you know, gets his prepped up for, for every game that we've got coming up. So certainly him and then, uh, like Lancer Hayes, you know, he, he should be back fit soon. And, uh, you know, you've got, you've got all sorts of quality players in there. So there's a real, there's a real mix of them, but definitely, uh, definitely Paul Wallens, yeah. They talk about you being the strongest man in the league. Now, I've never met a weak Cumbrian. If there was to genetically engineer <laughs> rugby players, they'd be Cumbrians. Why aren't there more of them coming through? I, I don't think there is enough. I've been up there with Stanley Lee, the amateur game, Kells, Ensingham. Millen, there's a fantastic amateur game. Why don't we get more Cumbrians at Super League? I think it comes down to the fact that there's no there's no Super League club up there, you know. So when a lot of people um, when they get to like 15, if they've not been picked up by then, that you just go into into uh, into Mine. into work or like you know like a small town syndrome, <laughs> like get out with the mates and stuff like that, and it all sort of it all sort of fades away really. But uh, that's what I reckon. If there was a Super League club up there and they could they could catch them from a real early age, then. I genuinely do believe there'll be more and more coming through. Biased hat off, where's the best place to have a Super League club up there? Uh, I would probably say in a place called called Lily Hall. It's a big industrial estate that's that's in between uh, Whitehaven and Working. Uh, I think that if you were going to build a new stadium, then you could you, you could build it there. But but if not, I, I believe you could do what they sort of do in the NRL and split the games between Whitehaven and Working. You know, so. You play half the home games at one venue and half at the other, and uh, and, and and maybe use maybe use Barrow as the as the as the club that would stay in the championship sort of thing. Um, I think that's one way. But there's look, there's a load of million ways that you could you could come up with. But I certainly do believe that it would it would it would survive and and definitely thrive now. Yeah. Well, we know you're very proud Cumbrian. We didn't want to bring you all the way here without paying you. So we've uh, pulled out all the stops. <laughs> and there you go. Awesome. That's Thank you. Cumbrian's fine. Cheers. Yeah. I didn't have a million texts. Yeah. I, I, I had a million texts from Carl. Where is my t shirt? Yeah. Where is my free t shirt? I thought he was coming on pigeon. <laughs> yeah. Kermo, we, we know he's a tight man. You've played with him. Is he as tight as everybody says? <laughs> Well, he says he's misunderstood, Simo, but he, he is quite, quite tight. I've never seen him buy a drink or, you know, even a shout of coffee or anything like that. The Saints lads are saying the same thing, as we've heard tonight, Simo. We're all looking very well again in our Yorkshire menswear suits. Thank you very much, Yorkshire menswear. I'd just like to ask Kyle where he's managed to get his dapper number from tonight. Uh, there's a, well... <laughs> Tell the truth, Kyle. Tell the truth. <laughs> Tell the truth, Kyle. LMS Taylor's in... Uh, in Billings, um, yeah. that's a lie. No, it's, no. So, for anyone that doesn't know, LMS Taylor's is actually Louis McCarthy's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so, rather than bringing his own suit, Kyle's been around and borrowed a suit for the occasion, but he does look very well in the suit. Yeah, looking very really good, mate. So, thanks for that. Right, <laughs> Kermo, it was time to have a look at your social media for the month. Have you been getting uh, some belters for us this month? Uh, yeah, it's been quite tough, I, I, I won't lie, Simo. Uh, everyone's a football manager this month and, uh, you know, the season started and also doing the ice bucket challenges. But I found a few sorts for us again. Obviously, Nick Youngquest is the number one rugby league sort, Mr Invictus himself. But we have got a few pretenders this month. What else have we got? Oh, Richie oh, Myler. What We've seen, is that We suit? have seen a few bad suits rolling around in Warrington. Richie Myler is sporting a red number, and he's, he's taking a bit of the emphasis off uh, Stephen Rashford's number as well. <laughs> what are they doing? To be fair, they're supporting a brand now, red and blue. So <laughs> oh, here he is, the ball. Yeah, not everyone is a sort straight away, you know. Some people have to develop into their bodies. Nick Scruton is a really good looking lad now, but as you can see, he's <laughs> not always been like that. And the same oh. way I guess tonight, Luke Robinson there. I think that's in the under 13s there. I don't know where he's got the wigging <laughs> kit from. And there we are. This is a sort. Oh, You'll flash. know more about is him, Matt, won't you? Is, is he as boring as these Twitter says? Massively boring. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a good sort. Oh. So here we are, the family secret. Ke Kev Brown's been showing Gazok, his uh, brother in law, <laughs> how to get the long neck. And uh, there Gaz is uh, trying it out. We've got Matt Lewis here. I thought it'd be rude not to put a Challenge Cup selfie on. Uh, Matt Lewis, friend of the show, one of our first guests. So they, they won't give it to Rugby M, but they'll let yeah. Harry Potter uh, <laughs> dance about with on his head. Yeah. Obviously, uh, he's more... Oh, Mickey Iam here. I, I like this one. Mickey McLaurin's put that one, one on. Uh, obviously, Mickey Iam is doing his um, testimonial and uh, 
And for Mickey Max said, that's the best one of you, easy pal. Top right is a dead ringer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and here, Joe Westerman, he, he's caught Jordy Thompson asleep in a, a lovely pose there on the <laughs> way home from training. That's not the most flattering, is it? <laughs> so we've come on to Mara now. We've uh, been on about this car again, Simone. <laughs> oh, there we go. So if, if anyone's thinking about leasing a car, go to Rapid Leasing uh, and straight away, Louis McCarthy's just saying no, no, no. So obviously they're bored of his uh, tightness. <laughs> Daryl Clark, contender for Man of Steel this year. Yep. Showing his Great. superpowers there. <laughs> yeah. Alex Walmsley's found that one. Uh, Cyclops from the X-Men. This is you, mate. This some is you. Some great sorts there, yeah. We uh, got sent over some uh, lovely speedos, uh, courtesy of Budgie Smuggler. I think you can see there, we're all looking very dapper in there, the Wakefield boys. Uh, Paul Ayton, the first PNG player to ever play at Wembley in a Challenge Cup final. So Good I thought, on you, Paul, I'll get that on there. Great he's a great lad. guy, he's Paul. He's a bit mad after a few beers, though, isn't he? He is, yeah. He's uh, <laughs> stopped drinking though now. Uh, <laughs> and this is the account of the month. I want everyone to follow this. Uh, boring Ryan Hall. I'm not sure <laughs> which is the most boring, whether it's his actual account or the boring one. <laughs> but as you can see, he's won the Challenge Cup, got Lance Todd. That simple. <laughs> Keith, Keith is not on bench at minute, but someone's saying just how strong Keith's beard is. It's looking so strong, it could lift a car off a baby if it had to. He, ha he has got a, a super strong, strong you got some, You've got some videos for this month as well. We have, yeah, we've got some great videos. Um, and there's the Rugby Union guys. They've got all this money, the Rugby Union players, but they can't tell the difference between Magnus and Champagne there, trying to <laughs> shake it. And it's actually Magnus, not Champagne. That's why it's not frothing. <laughs> There he is. Oh, there, is. there she is. There she is. Have you ever played in Slip Through Dog Club? That is my favourite video ever. I drive through it in training and it is not pleasant, so please keep your dogs off the rugby field unless someone's filming. And this is Matty Wilde, the well known golf forfeit. If you don't make it past the red tees, <laughs> that is dangerous filming. <laughs> he's got a glove on his lap. Yeah, he's got a glove on his little man there. <laughs> And here we are, best punch of the year. Oh! oh, oh. There she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic quality videos there. Uh, Mara, uh, we've, we've shamed you as well on Twitter. We were looking through um, your Twitter, and you do follow a lot of companies um, begging for free stuff. Is that true? Here we go, look. Costa, you got you got loads of companies there. No, I don't beg at all, you know, I just follow them and you never know. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's uh, not what we've heard, mate, and we'll be putting a dossier of your DMs. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us now if you want to, or we can uh, put a dossier of DMs on our website, www.rugbym.co.uk. Um, one thing you did do, though, I noticed you followed St. Ellen Starbucks before you followed any of your teammates. So, well, <laughs> 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 no comment. What's the best thing you've had for free? Let's be honest. My car. My car. <laughs> <laughs> what about? Is it true? This is. I, th I know this is true for a fact. You you asked Domino's for free pizza. No, that is not true. <laughs> that is not true. They actually said to me that next time you, you you ring up, you can have a free pizza. So I was hungry one night and I rang up and got me free pizza, didn't I? Athletes' food there. Yeah, too right. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, mate, thank you for coming on. Uh, we're gonna go back now. Wagger to part two of our on tour down in Wembley. Uh, how much fun did we have? Oh, mate, unbelievable one at Simo. Like, just the atmosphere with Electric. And to be honest, that's the first time I've ever been to Wembley. And to go as a fan was absolutely, I had a good time, had a few beers uh, and got amongst it. And, uh, we're singing some songs, weren't we? Can you sing, can you sing us a bit of a cast song? Uh, who to? Who to be? Who to be? Yeah. Cast <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. Part two. Uh, Rugby M on tour at Wembley. Right, we're going to go, Wagga, we're going to go for a little walk around uh, the Green Man pub. Is this the pub that is the place to be, really? To be honest, right, we put it out on Twitter and they said, which is the place to be around Wembley? They went the Green Man all day long. So we've come down, had a few beers with the Leeds and Cast fans. Absolutely unbelievable atmosphere, Simon. Come on, then, let's, let's go for a wonder. Hey, you got some of your lot here, Wagga? What do you reckon the scoreline will be today, boys? Oh, no, we're no, we're now, then. We'll go for 24, 22, Cast. 50 nil, Cass. 
Big game today, big game today. You can you honestly see Cass beating Leeds at Wembley? Get yeah, man, of course they're gonna win. Get man, get back. Get Spain. You, can, you better believe. First, first, first try scorer. First, first try scorer. Carney. Carney, I've got that. Carney. 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 Paul. Happy days. Good times. Paul always been a all day. It's a great atmosphere down here. The Green Man Pub. How awesome. do you feel about today's game? Awesome. Castle win. No danger. Castle, Castle win. win. Yeah. Castle win. Paul, what a legend. Everyone's gonna have it. Ball club time. <laughs> Tie it. We're all having a laugh. Yeah, it's the boys. Yeah, the boys. Oh. Right, guys. Everyone's been saying today a cast win. Do you, can you see a cast win? Can, can Leeds really be? Brilliant? It's no, 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 no way. It's gonna be. It's gonna be Leeds. Right now, it's turn. Seven time lucky. Seven time lucky. Seven right. time lucky for Simo, Leeds. Simo. Whoa, whoa. I've been walking around the Green Mile, yeah. and these are the first set of Leeds fans I've seen. <laughs> it's all Casper today. <laughs> Cast win. Yeah. <laughs> Leeds Rhinos, we're Leeds Rhinos! Phil Clark here, the stat man. Most important stats. Most tackles, Wigan. Most meters made, Wigan. Most chases, Wigan. Most conversions, Wigan. 420s, Wigan. Try scored, Wigan. The most angriest men, Wigan. Best wrestle, Wigan. Pies eaten, Wigan. And I hate Danny Maguire. Phil Clark, over and out. <laughs> Good day, my Justin Carney here. Boys, don't make me f***ing angry. I'll 100% ride you like a bull if you make me angry. Just want to give you an update on the old Cast Tiger situation. Well, has left, mate. Clark is left, mate. You be. I don't know, mate. I'm staying put, mate, because I love the cashier legs chopping out, I The challenge cup, mate. It's all about the <laughs> Mars bars, mate. You <laughs> are now, mate. Top of the morning, see a big bikini and not to be sniffed at. One of these a day, you lose 10 stone. In my caravan, I've got loads of shakers. We've even got a face cream. I'm traveling around, spreading the word about herbal life, the only life. Help a laugh, face cream. Hi everyone, Sir Kevin Simfield back. Six Super League titles, three World Cup challenges, two League Leaders Shields, and now one Challenge Cup. Big thanks to Luke Dawn, you couldn't catch a cold at Wembley. Sir Kevin Simfield here, MBE. Another fantastic Dupley Wagger, you are killing it, mate. Thank you, Simo. I'm absolutely loving doing the characters. I'm just so happy I'm not in Super League, getting my head taken off every single week. <laughs> every single week. Mate, it's, it's fantastic. Who's been like the, the mo character most people are talking about? To be honest, Lauren, um, I've had a lot with Jonesy. <laughs> uh, the Beer Club and also Jamie Foster. Mm. Hi guys. Hi so if you're watching Foster, step out of line on Twitter and Instagram, I'm coming for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, lads, it's, it's a bit of a sad day. We're, we're gonna be losing our leading lady next month because three weeks to go, lads, good luck from all us lot. What are you wanting, a girl or a boy? I think I'd quite like a girl, but then it'd be nice for uh, another boy. What do you think I'm having? Well, I said boy, Jonesy said boy, and the rest said girl, so I'm hoping a boy, and I hope you're going to call it Alexander. You've said this every week now, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Get it through your head. Alexander, rugby end, the second. <laughs> I think it's a great name. Walker. <laughs> oh, thanks. What do you think, yeah? Uh, no. 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 Well, good luck. And, uh, we need, we need to get a replacement, so have you got anyone lined up for us? Yep, I've got an absolutely beautiful big pecs. Yep. Quite a nice Ooh. little body on them. Oof. Yep, going to be wearing this exact dress. It's going to be a chef. Fantastic, Chef Walker. <laughs> the little sort that is Chef Walker. Now, th big thanks to all our guests tonight. We have had some great guests on the panel. If you want to get some more dose of Rugby AM during the month, www.rugbyam.co.uk. You can watch all our videos, all our backstage stuff. Do not forget to download the app, All Star FM, to listen to the Mad Monday show every single Monday, 7 till 9 p.m. Next month, we've got a special show from a very special location. 
Um, it's a little bit of a secret, but tune in this time next month right here. Premier Sports, the Rugby AM. <laughs>